Where do you usually get your keyboards from? Corsair? Cooler Master? Razer? How about Logitech? <laughs> nah, that's too pedestrian, bro. Anyone who's in that hardcore keyboard community knows that you gotta build your own keyboard. You know, and I'm not gonna pretend that I'm some kind of a hardcore keyboard enthusiast. I really am not. But I did build my own keyboard and I think that it is pretty sick. Ooh because it is absolutely silent and it's a pretty nice to type on. This is the Cheap 60 60% mechanical keyboard frame and as cool as it might look right now, putting it together didn't come without a boatload of issues and I want to review this keyboard frame as well as show off what's so awesome about it. But I also want to talk about those issues. So let's get into it. So this keyboard kit was sent to me by Novi Malaysia, uh, also known as Novi Keyboard right now. And by default, it comes with this acrylic case, uh, keyboard PCB inside, the uh, mount stabilizers for the larger keys like the spacebar, the enter key and the uh, backspace key, EVA foam for the switch pad, an acrylic keyboard stand and tools for lubing the keyboard like, you know, brushes and uh, grease and whatnot. It doesn't come with the Poron foam for the keyboard, any keyboard switches or keycaps, which was a huge problem for me and something that I will get into a little bit later. Now, one of the key selling points for this keyboard is its price and what you're getting for that price. See, this is probably the cheapest gasket mounted keyboard that you can get on the market. Never mind that you have to, you know, put it together yourself, but what exactly does gasket mounted mean? Well, traditionally in a normal keyboard, the PCB has direct contact with the keyboard frame. Now, as you can imagine, if you are, you know, hammering away at your keyboard keys, which those keys are connected to your key switches which are mounted onto said PCB, you're going to get a lot of noise and vibrations from the actions of just, you know, typing away on your keyboard. A gasket mounted keyboard alleviates that problem by kind of sandwiching the plate that the PCB is connected to with rubber gaskets, effectively removing that direct contact with the keyboard frame. What this means in practice is a keyboard that is not only a lot more silent, but feels better to type on due to this gasket mounted system. The super interesting thing about it is that it is also open source and was designed by a Chinese college student, probably from, you know, the uh, desire to not wake up his uh, roommate from all of his keyboard warrioring online. I mean, of course, right? What else could it be? <laughs> Now that's all fine and dandy, but it's still a keyboard that you have to assemble yourself and uh, honestly, the process of putting it together bordered on being nightmarish. The video instructions provided by Novi Malaysia, now known as Novi Keyboard, to me while starting off pretty well and detailed, descended into chaos and anarchy as soon as it asked me to use screws without telling me which ones to use. They were, there were so many kinds of screws provided in the packaging that I had to use a pair of digital vernier calipers to determine what was what. The assembly of the PCB in the video was skipped altogether and so I had to figure out and determine how to try and put it together and just when I thought I was through it all, they actually missed out on shipping me the top frame of the keyboard, meaning that it was impossible for me to put it together. Now, I find this pretty unacceptable and so I did bring it up with them because I mean, having it happen to me is one thing, but I wouldn't want it to happen to any other normal consumer out there. This was a couple of months ago, so hopefully they've gotten better at it. They eventually, you know, sent me the missing top part, this right here, and so I could finally continue this project and review. But then, as I was installing the switches, I started noticing problems with the keyboard plate and PCB. For starters, some keys just have this huge cutout where the uh, switches are meant to fit into, making it hard to align the switches during the installation. And this is especially apparent in the uh, 
out the FN, the left and the bottom key as well as the backspace, the enter and the backslash key where it's just this huge cutout. Never mind that though, the out key doesn't even have anything holding the switch onto the uh, plate and this also applies to the backslash key meaning that if you just want to remove the keycap you're always going to end up also ripping the switch completely off and let's also talk about that switch mounting plate because there was so much bloody flex in the acrylic plate that during the installation process i had to kind of push the plate up from the bottom to lock these switches in plate and the switch for the backspace key mounts upside down i'm gonna get into why that's a problem in just a little bit but first let's move on to the keycaps see this keyboard diy kit doesn't come with keycaps it's pretty much understandable and while i've got uh, keyboard switches of my own, I do not have keycaps lying around and so I naturally got in contact with Novi Malaysia, Novi Keyboard and I asked them to provide me with a couple of compatible keycaps. The keycaps that arrived weeks later were not compatible. Nope, the left shift is shorter than usual and the keycaps provided did not come with that right sized keycap and the right shift key needs a 1U sized keycap which was also totally missing from the provided keycaps. At this point I was pretty much up with sheer with my frustrations on this keyboard and so you know what I, I took a couple of months of break from it and you know Right now, a couple of months later, I finally went and got my own set of keycaps for it. And while everything for the most part fits perfectly now, I now have uh, keycaps for every key. Remember how I told you guys about that backspace switch that was uh, mounted upside down? Yeah, it means that the LED on the PCB can't shine through the keycaps correctly. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this was seriously the most frustrated and pissed off that I have been in any of the videos that I've made and it is winning by a long shot. Still though, I am here to tell you my findings of this keyboard and so I persisted through it all, put it together and hot damn. I mean, just ignore for a second all of those things that I just mention and just start typing on this keyboard and i can tell you oh man the experience is sublime it feels really good to type on and the key presses are just so damn silent on it especially when paired with these otomu linear silent whites that i installed onto it and bear in mind that i haven't even lubed any of the large stabilizers yet have a listen I mean, Otomu Silent Whites are awesome switches that have silencing pads on both the uh, top and bottom of the stems, but this gasket mounted keyboard body just takes them to another level. By then, the only other gripe that I had was that there wasn't any uh, keyboard legends for me to figure out the FN key combinations and there wasn't any documentation that I could find online to help me with that either. So. I'm kind of still in the dark on this. If you've got any idea on what the uh, full list of key combinations are, let me know. All I know is that FN and you know left and right brackets are page up and page down. So I can definitively say that this is the best keyboard typing experience that I've well 
I've experienced so far, even beating that of the uh, key move 61 that I reviewed before, but it didn't come without its fair share of blood, sweat, and tears. Well, more like stress, frustrations, and still tears. But yeah. Now, since I'm pretty adept at using Taobao, it looks like this model has pretty much been discontinued by its creator and is succeeded by the Cheap 60 Pro and Cheap 60 EX, both of which look like they've fixed heavily upon the uh, gripes and frustrations that I had with this Cheap 60 kit, like a uh, better designed switch mounting plate that doesn't allow you to just you know, rip out the keys. So if you were looking to get one of these, like here, I would instead point you to either getting the Cheap 60 Pro or EX. Right now, I'm really enjoying using this keyboard, but can I really recommend it? <laughs> um, you know what, if you're interested in getting it, I would recommend you either look at either the uh, Cheap 60 Pro or EX that I recommended earlier. Um, I can't guarantee that you will be free from headaches, but I think that it's a pretty good start to getting probably one of the best 60% typing experiences that you've ever experienced. I still cannot live without a numpad and a full-sized layout though, so I still like full-sized keyboards, but this is definitely like a side piece for me. Side note as well, look, I know I bashed this keyboard and Novi keyboard over on Shopee for this, but I don't bear any ill will. Well, at least not that much. Seriously though, putting this together was an ordeal. I'd like them to take all of this as constructive criticism as how to get better and improve on their services. And to be fair, you know, it looks like they've started selling compatible keycaps already. No doubt after a bit of our <clears throat> private talks. So kudos to them. That is pretty much it for me from this video. If you liked my <laughs> suffering, then make sure to give it a like, comment down below, share the video, and don't forget to subscribe, all of which helps me and my channel against YouTube that seems to be against smaller creators. My name is Yang, the tech rodent, and you know, I, I get that gamers like smaller keyboards, but as someone who is more productivity and numbers focused, I really find myself unable to part with a full-sized keyboard. I just wish that, you know, maybe they get as much love, right? Yeah. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ooh, that was a little bit of a burn right there.